Uh, we can jump off of that one. Now, we are 30 minutes in already. That means it is time for us to jump into the NFC East draft reaction. So, our, our recap, our, you know, all these wonderful things about it. The Cowboys, the Eagles, the Redskins, the Giants. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we start the team-by-team team breakdown? Nope. You want to start with the Cowboys? I most certainly do. They didn't have a ton of draft picks, but that's okay because, man, did they get some freaking value. Their over-under for the season win total is 9.5. They needed wide receiver help. They needed quarterback help. They needed edge rusher help. And by God, did things work out. The good Lord smiled down on the great city of Dallas, Jerry Jones and his yacht on draft night. And they dropped C.D. Lamb directly in their lap at pick number 17. Not a single mock draft had this guy going any later than like the 13th pick. Absurd that you he fell that watched point. the three hours of our draft coverage. We were shocked. When this came up, I knew it was going to happen, and it made me visibly sick. Yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible. Um I was I was shocked a little bit, I I guess. I I there's no reason that this guy should have fallen. Of course, we were all really surprised that Ruggs was the first wide receiver off the board. Maybe That's we right. shouldn't have been, but that 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 threw the monkey wrench and things. And then also I just thought that I thought CD was the kind of player that player teams would trade up to go get. Yes. I, I could not believe the Falcons took A.J. Terrell right before this pick. The Falcons are not good enough. A.J. Terrell is, there's not a big board on the planet that A.J. Terrell was a better player than C.D. Lamb. And the value that you had at the 16th pick to go get a cornerback, and, st- and, and Dallas, I don't think, was going to move up to go get C.D. Lamb. No. No, Dallas but, was sitting here, and they were fine with taking the best defensive player there. Everyone assumed that they were going to take like a big time edge rusher or something of that nature, yeah. um, and, and that's that's where everyone just thought they were going to go. And I think they were happy with that, with all the projections. I think they were totally fine. Yeah, and instead, and then they realized uh, there's too much value this thing here. Has been dropped in my lap. Yeah, I can't say. You just don't say nothing. Uh, so, C.D. Lamb at pick number 17, which is, again, absurd. And in the second round, they get cornerback Travon Diggs out of Alabama, who was speculated as a first-rounder, uh, graded out as a first-rounder. Just unbelievable. Third round, they get Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. Uh, uh, they get Reggie Robinson, cornerback out of Tulsa in round four, along with Tyler Biadads. I hope I said that right, from Wisconsin. That's just an incredible name. Uh, edge rusher Bradley Ane from Utah, who, again, that Utah defensive line was gangbusters all season long. Uh, and then they get quarterback Ben DiNucci out of James Madison in the seventh round. He's got to take a flyer on just to see what's going on. You know, if, if Dak doesn't work out in his franchise season, this it, maybe this is a guy. You never know. So, uh, I, I got to tell you, the, the first and the second round, the fact that Diggs fell all the way to 51 – that's where uh, this draft was won for them. Oh, 100%. I mean, they, their needs were wide receiver, cornerback, and edge rusher. And, I mean, they, they got all three, really. I mean, they, they got their edge rusher in the fifth round. And I think all four of the guys from Utah's defensive line last year can be competent, very uh, uh, productive NFL players. And that, that might be it. I wasn't impressed with what they did in the middle of the draft, but at the end of the day, the value you got at the the top two picks was just pretty incredible. Oh, it, you didn't screw un- it up. Yeah, it came unreal. to you. It fell to you, and and you you did the right thing. Um, but you know, after that, nothing else they did you know blew me back. I guess if you need offensive line help, I always used to have a philosophy. My uncle taught me God, years and years and years ago. If you don't know who to take. Take the best Wisconsin offensive lineman that's left on the draft. Just, just, <laughs> just draft that guy, and he's probably going to be a better pro than anybody else you could have taken. Yeah, and so, so they follow that philosophy. That's that's probably pretty good. Couldn't you know? I don't, I don't know that I'm in love with the other guys. They might pan out. They might not. The the value you got at the top is amazing. It's oh, it's one hundred percent. Let me let me tell you about Pro Football Focus here. Now, I I don't know necessarily what this says about them, um, but they. CeeDee Lamb was the sixth best prospect on their big board, and he was the third best wide receiver prospect they have ever evaluated behind only Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. 
based on their college careers, all that kind of mess, right? Like, it, obviously, this doesn't include measurables, whatever else. It depends on what they did on film, and C.D. Lamb is the third all-time, and they got this dude at pick 17. It's insane. Man, that, that, all right. That That's ranking, what I'm saying. It, I, don't, it, I don't know what it says about, you know, pro football focus. That ranking and that stat, that, I mean, they, they prefaced it by something that doesn't sound like much, but when you think back at guys like Megatron, who yeah. played at Georgia Tech, so his college and that, film. And that's the thing. It's, we're not it's, taking his combine. We're not taking his measurables. We're not no, taking it's, any, it's we're just graded out on film. Out. Larry Fitzgerald at Pitt, like, these guys were obviously better prospects and better receiving prospects than the three guys. And then there are a hundred others that came before those guys that were far better than them. Yeah. They might not have had a better college careers, which is all they're looking at. Yeah, I mean, it's it's based on how you graded. Who um, had the best college career? Well, if you were only a one-year starter because you went to a school that had a ton of wide receiver talent or just didn't throw the football a lot, then you're not going to have the numbers or marks that he had or Judy had or Cooper had. Agreed, agreed. I mean, there are better receivers that have come out of Alabama that were far better than Cooper. Oh, far better. Well, I mean, Julio Jones. Julio, Julio is the biggest one. Julio yeah. is, is the one that, you know, did he have the college career those guys have? No, because he came on late. And yeah, well, I mean, not, not even that he came on late. He he came to Alabama at a time when they were running the football 45 times a game. Oh, well, sure. Okay, you know? you're right. The offenses were just different. Yeah. So, like, imagine know. Julio Jones with, with Tua Tonga-Valoa. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, that, or that or any of these, uh, any of the other hundred receivers that have come through. So now you're, like, taking the guy that I love and you're making me kind of shit on him because – they just compared him to the greatest receivers of all time, and he's just not going to be that. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I, I, look, I'm saying they got CeeDee Lamb, who was the sixth best prospect on their board this year. Perfect. I'm good the, with that. At the number 17 spot. Perfect. That is crazy to me. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. And then they get uh, they got Trevon Diggs at 51. Diggs was the 31st guy on their big board. I mean, that's... It, we're we're not even talking about you know the huddle report any of that the val- I mean just this is just don't screw it up I will I'll say this the Cowboys were ranked number one at the huddle report as far as value picks every single pick that they took was valued higher by the huddle report and that's only one organization but I I trust what the huddle report does I. That's that's fine. But, that's fine. I'm certain with the depth of this draft in the fourth round, there was somebody that's going to rank better than the kid from Tulsa. I don't know anything about the kid. I just know this is a really deep draft. Yeah, I mean the kid and from Tulsa, Tulsa was ranked for the defense. The kid so. from Tulsa was ranked number 96 on the big board, and he was taken at 123. Now no. at that point, in the middle of the draft, you and I have talked about this. Anywhere from like round four to about the, the, you know the, the seventh difference round between ranked number hundred and ranked number two hundred player ain't a lot. Ain't a lot. It doesn't matter. It just depends Don't take on what a long you need snapper and you're fine. <laughs> or a punter or a kicker, right? <laughs> Drives me insane. All right. Let's uh let's go ahead and move into the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm uh I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this. Uh they were they were surprising, I guess you could say. Uh we'll we'll go ahead and go through all the picks. They they had a few of them. They, they took wide receiver Jalen Rager out of TCU with their first-round pick at number 21. Uh, he's like 5'9". He's super fast. Um, you know, okay. like I, Okay. They took quarterback Jalen Hurts out of Oklahoma in the second round. They took linebacker Davion Taylor out of Colorado in the third round. Fourth round, they had two picks. They got cornerback Kavon Wallace out of Clemson. They got offensive tackle John Hightower out of Boise State. They got uh, in the sixth round... Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Fourth round, offensive tackle Jack Driscoll from Auburn. Fifth round, wide receiver John Hightower out of Boise State. Sixth round, linebacker Sean Bradley from Temple. Uh, also sixth round, Quez Watkins, wide receiver out of Southern Miss, who can fly, by the way. Uh, sixth round, offensive tackle Prince Tega Wanagu out of Auburn, who, we if you watch the SEC on CBS, you heard his name a thousand times this year. And in round seven, they got edge rusher Casey Tuhill out of Stanford. Uh, Overall, I like 
the Eagles draft, I think it was okay. Uh, we didn't talk about the the Cowboys. I think we both like what the Cowboys did, right? Both like the Cowboys, yes. Uh, the Eagles, I so they needed wide receiver help, right? And and by going with it's Hightower, it, they they got Rager in the first round. Maybe reached a little bit for that. I think they they wanted speed more than they trusted the better overall talent. Um. Because Rager can fly, but he's like, you know, 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, like, he, I, you know, I, I think people are so infatuated with the Tyree Kill stuff that's going on in Kansas City. Like, am, am I crazy about that? Here, talk to me, because I, I see your face here. Tell me what I'm... I'm not impressed with this draft. And I and, I, and it all started at the top. I think they there are five receivers that went after Rager that I would have taken over Rager. Yeah, I, I, I'll like, say this... Is, because I don't want to, I don't want to talk bad about the kid because I think he is immensely talented. Okay, but I he was not a he was not a top twenty one draft pick to me. Uh, Sir Dobby jumps in on YouTube. Have you done the Redskins yet? Nope. That is coming up right after yeah. we get done with the Eagles. So, uh, oh by the way, they uh, the Eagles needed a linebacker, wide receiver, and safety help. Their over under for the season is nine and a half. It's kind of high. I thought a little. A little crazy. I, I thought I thought they missed on the receiver. They took th- – there are seven possible receivers, eight possible receivers that probably could have went in the first round, early second round, and I thought he was at the back of that. Um, let me let me tell you – oh, good gracious, sorry about that. Uh, okay. So, the huddle report. Uh, the Eagles did get a lot of value in, in the later part of the draft, but look, Jalen Rager was number 33 on their big board. And they took him 21. Jalen Hurts was number 76 on their big board. They took him 53. So I think the Jalen Hurts pick was a complete wasted pick. I, this is a team. This is a team that believes in two quarterbacks. They don't call him the backup. They call him their second quarterback, just like their second cornerback, just like their second receiver and second running back. Um, I I don't think that Jalen is going to play in the NFL very well. And I mean, there were there were scouts that were talking about he could be good value at kick returner. Well, that ain't what you take in the second round, you dumbass. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Like like yes, Julian Edelman has a lot of value being able to play wide receiver and do trick plays with. But you get Julian Edelman for a bag of beans at the back of the draft. You yeah. don't spend a second round pick when this team sucked last year. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, Darren McCardle jumped in with a super chat on YouTube. Uh, he said, are you doing the Dolphins? Today is only the NFC East. We did the Dolphins yesterday. You can go back and find that. Uh, but, go back and catch those. But, but hang out with us. We uh, we really liked what the Dolphins did. So uh, definitely go and check that out. But hang out so with I'm, us for a little bit, and let's talk about the NFC East right now. So I'm, so I'm, not, so I'm not impressed with this draft. And, and, and there's probably a bunch of guys... I thought they got a ton of value late. I thought it was yes, great late. Like the, the cornerback from Clemson, they addressed that. I thought he was good. Offensive tackle, Driscoll from Auburn, good kid, good player. He's probably going to be a decent pro. Yeah, when I go from Auburn, I thought I, I think he's going to yeah, be great. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, they, they got two O-linemen from that Auburn offensive line. That's a good line. That's yeah. a good line. Yeah, I thought you they know, were good. They're going to be fine. They, you, you you mentioned the kid from um uh, from uh, uh, la, 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 Southern Miss, that can just fly. Yeah, Quez Watkins. Yeah, like you've got you've got speed, and that's fine. That's you, you all took, fine. You took flyers you, on guys in the sixth and seventh. You round. had an opportunity to yeah. take a Justin Jefferson or a T Higgins, a just a or you could have taken a Mims. All these guys have speed too. Okay, yeah, they're all really fast too, and they just comp better than than Rager. They just do. Yeah. And then your second pick for a team that was bad last year and has got holes. Was a backup quarterback that at least 20 of the 32 teams don't believe this guy could play quarterback and wasn't on a draft board. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what's insane to me. It's, it, I don't get it. You, you know, as well as anybody, me being an Alabama fan, I love Jalen Hurts. You can want a, good things for him. That's yes, awesome. He is a fantastic. I was so glad that he got drafted in the second round because he's going to get paid, and it's great, yeah. right? But – and, and this might that money because you're not getting paid again. This this might be a good spot for him, you know, to be able to play. But I don't know. That's a good thing. I don't know if it is either. The more that he I, showcases his talent, you so you and I be real careful about 
about claiming uh, Doug Peterson as an offensive guru, okay? Yeah, because he hadn't because been great since uh, since Frank Reich that, left, I know. That great offense that they had that led them to a Super Bowl where they looked unbelievable with a backup quarterback, mind you, was all Frank Wright. Yeah. And ever since Frank left, Carson Wentz hasn't been close to the same guy, and that offense has sucked. And people would say, well, look at the receivers. Name the receivers they had on that Super Bowl run because they're all the same guys that are there right now or were and have been cut. Yeah. Michael jumped Those in on Twitch. Those guys were better under Frank Wright. Frank oh, Wright yeah. is a genius. Frank Wright is a great coach. I don't know that Doug Peterson is. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said, what's up, fellas? Uh, we're <laughs> He jumped in a little late, but we uh, we appreciate you jumping in. We started early today, brother, so yep. make sure you check out the podcast or watch it later on YouTube. Um, so, I, I love Jalen Hurts. You and I argued about this back and forth for a long time last season where I said, look, Tua is the better quarterback. He just is. And you thought that they should have left Jalen as the starter and all that. And, and I don't know what Jalen did to lose his job outside of the bad first half. He he just Losing wasn't. his job and being the better quarterback are not the same thing. Right. It kind of. I mean, they kind of are. Like, you, you lose your job if somebody is better at the job than you. Like it's the same thing with the flooring business that you were just talking about. Like if you yeah, get a bad I review do on Yelp, something to get fired. I got to do something to get a bad review. Jaylen right, never right. Did. And that's the thing. And and Jalen did enough to get a bad review because he couldn't throw the football. Now it was only in one game. He uh, no, it was in. <laughs> it was the whole season. I promise you, it was the whole season. Um, in 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 the season before that. Now he got and that better. Doesn't mean he's going to be a good pro, by the way. No, that he's going to do what you do in college. Tim Tebow was an excellent quarterback in college. Doesn't mean he deserves one of these thirty-two jobs. No, no, no. It definitely not because even in college, you knew that it, that his release and whatnot was not NFL. He can't quality. throw the football. Like, no, he can't throw the football. And and my, my I don't. Thought of, I thought you could still win national championships at Alabama with Jalen. And well. It, not with Clemson around the corner, right? Like not with Georgia doing what they're doing. Like it, 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 it became a, a big time thing. And and Jalen has improved as a passer, but has he improved to NFL quality? He, it, I don't it's not think about so. As a passer, but he can't read a defense. He went to the one place where you don't have to read a defense. Lincoln Riley's offense is one read. If it's not there, pull it down, run the ball. Yeah, he did it with Baker. He did it with Kyler, and he's done it with them. Now, I will say this, like. Lamar Jackson has kind of the same thing going on at Baltimore. That's, that's absolutely not true. That's absolutely not true. Lamar Jackson's offense at Louisville was not a one-read offense. Bobby no, Petrino's no, no, no. It offense wasn't. is a complex offense where you have to read defenses. Agreed. But I, I at Baltimore, I think that it would be about the same. They're nothing alike. But they're that's, nothing alike, Gary. But that's the thing. Hold on. They're hold black on. and they're fast. That's it. That's where the line goes away <laughs> when you compare those two. I'll say this, Lamar. Ja- uh, let's see. Just say no to drugs. Said Lamar Jackson's about to get game planned so hard for. We're gonna yeah, disagree. I think so. I, We're gonna I, disagree. That, I'm that's gonna that's totally that fine. Buck. I'm gonna I, keep riding that buck until I get thrown off. I am on the other side. Uh, and Michael jumps in on Twitch. He said Jalen is an athlete with an arm. I have the same issue with mine at A and M. Look, I I think that Jalen is smart enough to read defenses at this point. When he was at Alabama, he was not. Uh, he, wasn't it, at, he wasn't at Oklahoma, so what happened between Oklahoma and today for he didn't get drafted? I mean, he got smarter. That, that's between the thing, not right? Playing football? I don't believe that he should have been a second-round draft pick. I thought somebody would fall in love with his abilities and would draft him. That's why I bet on it. But I, I this is this was early. This is not the right spot for him. I don't. I, this is a wasted pick. I mean, it just wasted it, pick. In yeah, the second round for a team I, that sucked last year. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, they. I mean, they kind of did. They made the playoffs. They suck. The games that they won, they won ugly. They won bad. They the, won a, games where nobody wanted to win. They played a game in Washington that was unwatchable. They played a Monday night football game in Atlanta that nobody wanted to win. And when the offense looked the best was when <laughs> Josh McCown was in, and he drove them all the way down the field. And then all of a sudden, Wentz is feeling better. He gets in the goal line. I want to get this touchdown in. And what does he do? Cocks it up. Yep. That's a, a uh, just say no to drugs said he's better than Herbert. And then he said, on his back, though. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. I, I'm with you about, about Jalen Hurts. I love Jalen Hurts. I wish nothing but success for him. I hope that he ends up being a better quarterback than we project him to be. 
But I mean, from what we saw at Oklahoma, what we saw at Alabama, he is not NFL starter quality, and there's no reason if you've got Carson Wentz and you are planning to build your team around Carson Wentz that you should take a guy to come in and replace Carson Wentz. Like, that's just ridiculous. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said Eagles had no business making that pick then. 100%. He didn't. Like, they... they it, it, so many talented athletes on the board still there. It, it's so the same many. thing. It's the same issue we had. With, and this was at pick 53. We had the same issue with Green Bay. Like, it, it just it made zero sense for the front office. And look, Now, the difference is, is if they don't take love there, I think somebody else has taken love. There yeah. were enough teams that do need a quarterback that were interested and enamored with love. I do not believe that was the case with Hurts. I just don't. No, I, I don't think so either. I don't I've read so enough either. to where I know there was at least a third of the league had him off of their board. He's just not draftable. He's just not going to get the job because he doesn't do the one thing they need. And if you could, well, maybe we can move him to receiver. Great. This is the deepest receiver class we've ever had. Is he better than any of those guys who are really freaking good? <laughs> I don't no, think so. No, he's not. He's like the 50th best receiver coming out of this draft. Then no, that doesn't help. No. Matt on uh, on YouTube said Hurts is a hard worker and keeps quiet. He's the type of guy who comes in, works hard, learns and earns his way on the field. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Okay. Just say no to drugs Listen, said. It. The guy's a the guy's a nice guy. He's a great 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 guy. That is that is not an attribute for 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 being an NFL player. I'm sorry. I wish um, they were all better guys, but at some point in time you got to be able to play. Just say no to drugs on Twitch. Said Jalen Hurts' career outlasts Jordan Love and Justin Herbert. He said, let's make a long-term bet on this. Um, Ooh, I don't know about that. I think Herbert's going to last just for the sheer fact that because of where he was drafted, this is GMs don't like to give up on their guys. Uh, yeah, no, I can understand that. He said, uh, I'm going to tell you this right now. If Tom Brady does not pick the the Bucks, they re-sign and double down on Jameis Winston. That's um, a fact. Just a note of drugs said, dude, I watch film uh, for every game, and you are way underestimating him. Uh, his skill set was much improved in Oklahoma. And, yes, he could throw the ball exceptionally better at Oklahoma than he did at Alabama because of his the coaches that he played the offense under. offense that he ran. Yeah. Dan Enos, his quarterback coach at Alabama, helped him immensely his junior year. His senior year, he played for Lincoln Riley. Yes, he got better as a quarterback. But yes. did he get NFL starter better? I don't think so. Uh, he said he's very good, flushed out of the pocket, much like Burrow. Now, Darren McArdle does another super chat on uh, on YouTube. He said three years in a row, Wentz went down, needed a backup quarterback. If that is the case, this why would you guy. take a guy that doesn't fit your offense? Go get Andy Dalton. Go get Cam Newton. You go get those guys for a ham sandwich right now. Yeah, and and, and they would fit. Uh, Andy Dalton would fit your offense so much better right now than Jalen Hurts. It just would. Like, it, it, I and again. I love Jalen Hurts, and I hope, just say no to drugs, that Andy Dalton is Dunsky's boys. Come on. I don't think so. I don't think Here's he is. He's in love with the guy. He I, thinks he can I, win the Super Bowl. I, I don't know that he can win a Super Bowl. That's I just, what you said earlier. I said he could compete for a Super Bowl with the Patriots. That's with I, the Patriots, that's, that's though. That's what you just said. How, how, how's it any different than what I just said? <laughs> hey, he jumps in. He said, come on, bet. Bet. <laughs> I'll make any bet you want on Jalen Hurts. I w- I really will. I'll, I'll I, take that chance. I I hope <laughs> Matt said Gingers have no souls. I swear to God, man. The guys we got in our chat are just bonkers. I swear to God. All He's right. not wrong. Uh, He's not wrong. We, no. <laughs> let's uh let's go. Uh, do we? Uh, hey, so for this uh, for the Eagles, I don't like it. I you don't like it. It if it's possible to split it, I don't like what they did early. I really That's like right. what they did late. Yeah, if um, they would have not cocked up the first two picks, then yeah, I could have easily very much liked this team. Yeah, I, I love everything they did from round three through round seven. I love when all there were of that. Stars to be available to be had at the first two picks, and you mess those up. I just, I'm. It's hard for me to yeah hold my nose and 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 swallow the rest of it. I think they got some guys in round from the hundredth pick on. Right. We that they can that, be long term. I, I named off a couple of guys that I think they they did well on. Yeah, so. I, I think they got some good guys in those. We'll uh we'll move on from there. Let's go ahead and jump into the Washington Redskins. Five and a half is their regular season win total right now. They needed edge rusher, they needed wide receiver, and they needed offensive line help. 
edge rusher, uh, you don't get much better than Chase Young. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, that's that's just about the best that you can possibly do. They needed wide receiver help. Uh, they took Antonio Gibson out of Memphis in the third round. They didn't have a second round pick. They got Sadiq Charles, offensive tackle from LSU. They got wide receiver Antonio Gandy Golden out of Liberty, who I love. I told you before the draft, I think that guy's going to be wonderful. Uh, yeah. Keith Ismail, uh, interior offensive lineman out of San Diego State. Linebacker Kalik Hudson out of Michigan. Safety Cameron Curl out of Arkansas. And then edge rusher James Smith Williams out of NC State. Uh, all guys that need a little work, but can be really, really good. I think Antonio Gandy Golden could be a, a first day starter. Uh, Michael jumps in. He said, uh, he said, Gibson was my guy, damn it. Uh, Sir Davi said, absolute steal for AGG. And then Matt said, Kevin Hart will somehow pay off someone and get on the field for the Eagles. <laughs> Kevin Hart ain't getting on the field for nobody. He's five foot four, man. Come on. Like, <laughs> Kevin Hart just broke his back like a couple months ago too. So yeah, I don't think that's, I don't think he's that's playing for nobody. It's tough to come back from. It's, I, yeah, I don't think, I, it doesn't matter how much you pay somebody. Well, I don't know. I mean, the NFL loves money, but I, they already printing enough of it as it is, so it, it doesn't matter. Um, so they they needed wide receiver help, they needed offensive line help, and they needed an edge rusher. They got two pretty good edge rushers, like James Smith Williams at NC State Project. Got, gonna need a little work. Um, you know, Antonio Gibson. He's listed as a running back out of Memphis. The guy lined up in the slot regularly. Well, they said they're gonna they're gonna use him all over the field. He'll be yeah. in on. Every snap, all three, all three downs. Yeah, Ron, Ron Rivera loves guys like that. Antonio Gibson, you know, I think he he meshes more with you know McCaffrey than he does, and that's what Rivera said. Yeah, Rivera said we're going to use him like McCaffrey. Yeah. Let's hope not. Let's hope he doesn't touch the ball forty times a game because he's not built like McCaffrey. McCaffrey kind of jacked. <laughs> My, Michael said, uh, "Is Kevin Hart long snapper?" <laughs> oh Lord, Lord. Hey, don't I, get me on long awesome. snappers again. Uh, Matt said, doesn't Washington like to overpay some defensive linemen who just flop? Big Dan Wilkerson, Albert Hainsworth. Yeah, they do. Um, but Chase Young is on a rookie deal, so. Yeah, well, that was, that was Bruce Allen's deal. Bruce Allen Yeah, and Bruce gone. Allen ain't there anymore. So, like, Bruce Allen's gone. So, here's my only problem. I hate when some of these guys go a little crazy with the comps because then I immediately start taking a kid that I love and I think is a surefire stud. And now I'm kind of shitting on him because you've you've said that he was X, Y, and Z. Somebody had came out and there was it was it had to be for ESPN because that was all I watched the draft on. And they comped Chase Young at being, and I quote, better than Von Miller, Miles Garrett, uh, Nick Bosa, and uh, and Davion Clowney. Better than all those guys. And I thought. <sighs> Listen, all those guys have proven it in the league. Like all it's, those guys are exceptional. Nick Bosa, one year and completely changed the front seven of the 49ers. Yeah. The rest of those guys have done it for multiple years. Let's just be a can't we just say the kid's gonna be a stud? Can't you just say he's gonna be a freak and yeah, why, why do we fine? need to comp him? Like why why do we need to compare him to anybody? Well, and know? I'm okay with comps, but coming out and flat out definitively saying he's gonna be better than all of these guys just sets the bar so high that all he can do is fail. Well, I mean, all it, he can it, do is it, fail. If you look at the first three games, because that's all Chase Young played last year. Uh, not Chase Young, sorry, uh 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 Miles. No, no, uh Ohio State Nick Bosa. That's all that Nick Bosa played for Ohio State. Yes, in, that's in right. his last year was the first three games. Then he got hurt, and then he was out. But in those three games, you knew who the teams were game planning for, and right. he still was able to dominate those games. Nobody was able to take him out of a game. Chase Young didn't make an impact in those, and I understand that you can grow a lot from your sophomore to your junior year. Totally understand. But good gracious, uh, we we saw Chase Young get game planned and schemed out of games. Yeah. Uh, he didn't do a whole lot against Michigan. He didn't do a whole lot against Wisconsin. He didn't do a whole lot against Clemson. And yeah. uh, yes, they had they double teamed him. They did, but that's right. That's but right. they didn't. Ha but they the didn't always is, double team. Is, they brought an extra blocker late, and and it and the, didn't change up what they did. That's it. And the, and the difference is, is those are college guys doing that. Now you've got pros across the board. The talent difference between what he was at Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, to yeah. Wisconsin, and close. 
It yeah. ain't close. I mean, it's just it, the, the guys that were blocking him for like Wisconsin. Him. I think he's going to be a stud. I'm yeah. very excited to watch him. I just wish that that wouldn't happen because now every time I see him, I think of that and I think disappointment. I'm going to be disappointed when I watch this kid because I don't know what he could do to be better than Nick Bosa or Von Miller. I don't, I don't know what he could do. Now, I will say this. Let, let's, let's get back on the positive side of this. Okay. Chase Young is a stud. I is think stud? he's going to be incredible. We he doesn't been, have been, to live up to those standards to be nope. incredible. That's, that's so, why I don't like the statement. I don't understand why you do that. Your own, the only way that plays, there's only two ways that can end up good. One day you're given a Hall of Fame speech and you go back and you hear that. Or you get bounced and somebody does a Brady Six or whatever documentary 10 years later and you hear somebody say, this guy is a can't miss dude, and he's out of the league in three years. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the only two way that 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 you know the the telecaster making that statement has a chance for that statement to live on forever. Yeah, he's, he's a Hall of Famer, or he's bounced. Other than that, you just set a kid up for failure. Yeah, you absolutely do. Uh, Antonio Gibson again, great pick. Sadiq Charles. I, I mean, he was killer at, at LSU. I think they, I think they had a great draft. They, they, I really yeah. do. I, I really like what they did. They took some flyers on some guys uh, in the late rounds, and and I think you know, obviously, you work with them. It is what it is. Michael said, uh, I, Michael said, just like ESPN to uh, to crown people to sell hype. Vaughn was a Super Bowl MVP. He said, Chase Young right. is a beast, has the potential to be up there with Vaughn Mack and Bosa. Um, I believe yeah. that if the 49ers would have won the Super Bowl, Nick Bosa would have been the MVP as well. Yes, I like I, I like I, I I think when they're up by ten going into the fourth, I thought, I, damn, we're gonna have a rookie be the MVP, and it's the second time a defensive end is gonna be an edge player. So um, I I, I could have been wrong on that, but a lot of football left. Obviously, Patrick right. Mahomes had something to say about it, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I think I think they did a really good draft. This is the difference between having a moron like Bruce Allen run your organization and bringing in a professional like Ron Rivera. Yeah. Who knows what he's doing? This yeah. is an adult in the room to tell Dan Snyder, get in a locker. Yeah. Don't touch it. Don't, Don't touch, touch anything. I will handle this. My team now. Fix it. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I uh I also like what uh what the Redskins did. I, I thought I thought it was a good draft for them, and we don't see that very often. No, we don't but but this is the first time in how many years Bruce Allen's was over that team for a long time. Time. Oh, forever. Him and Dan Snyder were just, it was like they were connected at the dicks, man. I don't know what was going on. It, it was it was definitely strange. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move into the New York Giants. Uh, they're over under for the season six and a half wins. They needed offensive line help. They needed linebacker help. They needed edge rusher help. So let's go ahead and talk about, uh, about their picks. Number four pick overall, they took Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. He was... Uh, Widely regarded as the fourth of the of the top four, but they were all so similar that it just kind of depended I, on. I, I don't think that was a, a terrible pick I, at I all. I don't know that, as much as I had him third. Yeah. I don't know that that was a knock because you're right. Yeah. There was such a minor separation, in my opinion, between the top three. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> We've been over that. Uh, Xavier McKinney dropped all the way to them at number thirty six. Uh, That's McKinney, insane. Yeah, that, this is the pick that I just couldn't understand. It's a, and, him and, him and, and T. It, Higgins fallen when all the wide receivers that yeah. went before them and all the cornerbacks that went before them. I just don't either. I don't know. I don't know football. I don't understand the game the way I thought I did. Or just a lot of people were dead ass wrong. Yeah, and and I mean, obviously, we will find out over the next couple of years. But uh, I don't round get it. round three, they got tackle Matt Pert out of Connecticut. I I didn't watch a <sighs> single. UConn game last year. I can't get behind. This is where they lost me. I thought they did really good. They didn't cock up the first pick. That's fine. They hit a home run with the second pick. And then in the third round, Nothing they take else another they tackle. really did made sense to me. Not that any of these guys are all bad. They're probably fine. But none of them just blew my hair back. No. Look, they uh, didn't take a long snapper. They didn't take a punter. I, no. I, okay, but that's the only redeeming quality they have to me. <laughs> Fourth round, they took quarterback Darnay Holmes out of UCLA. Uh, athlete could be pretty good. I mean, we'll see. Round five, uh, interior offensive lineman Shane Lemieux out of Oregon. Round six, uh, linebacker Cam Brown out of Penn State. Round seven, they had four 
picks in the seventh round. I was just about to say, these are all seventh round guys. And it's just flyers, right? So they took edge rusher Carter Coughlin out of Minnesota, who was actually pretty good for Minnesota last year. Uh, If if I know who a guy is and I was able to watch him make big-time plays uh, for Minnesota, then, yeah, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah. But they obviously they watched Minnesota as well because they also took cornerback Chris Williamson from PJ Flex team. They took linebacker TJ Brunson from South Carolina and Mister Irrelevant linebacker Tay Crowder out of Georgia. Um, Crowder was good. They TJ went Brunson power was five good. football, all defensive minded guys. Well, I guess PJ yeah. Flex not, but Minnesota had a pretty good defense. Yeah, it was, um, it was all right. But 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 Georgia and South Carolina dudes from really smart defensive coaches. So, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I will say this, uh, Andrew Thomas was the first rated offensive tackle from Pro Football Focus. Uh, he had elite production against the best of the SEC. I mean, LSU, Alabama, Florida, Auburn, like he, he was fantastic against those teams. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, all, all of that makes sense. Safety wasn't a pressing need when you, when you got McKinney on the board and he fell that far. Like that's a massive yeah. value pick. That's just a, that's just a don't yeah. mess it up. That's a that's a CD Lamb to the Cowboys. It's like we weren't really wanting a receiver. We don't need a receiver or another skill guy, but we can't pass this up. Why would we do this? The Brown Yeti jumps in on YouTube. He said him and Sweat will be a good team. I think. Um, okay, I, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> I I I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but I'm. They just lost me with the the. I was I was I kind of liked what they were doing, especially when they got uh, McKinney, and then everything else from there just became so. Not that the draft is always about being sexy, but I, I was just kind of blah. Third, third and fourth round, I was a little I, like I I'm still questioning those, but honestly, if a kid from UConn yeah. turns out to be a really good football player in the pros, I'm just going to be wrong. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. Congratulations. And I wish the kid the best. Listen, that was that was a bad football team. All 90-something athletes on that school couldn't play anywhere else. That's the reason they all went to UConn. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to believe that pro on there. Rounds three and four, I did not like what they did. <laughs> Rounds one and two, and then five through seven, I love what they did. I thought yeah. they did pretty it was good. okay. I guess it was okay. It's fine. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with I liked their draft yeah. in this one. Yeah, it's it's okay with flyers. I'm okay with the flyers they took. Those guys could be good, and yeah. they could wash out. But that's what. Listen, when you got four seventh round picks, that's what you do. We're, what, what are we talking? About? You just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So let's let's go ahead and discuss for the NFC East uh, who won, who lost. Um, I hate to. It, I mean, the value that the Cowboys got. Uh, I think I think they ended up a better team, and and it's not like they were a terrible team to begin with. Well, that's why um, I'm, I'm taking the draft alone. You can't take the team they had going into the draft. Yeah, yeah. Dra- draft alone. I'm going to take the Cowboys. So I think I'm going to. I think, and, and this could be just the dislike I have for the Cowboys speaking. That's fine. I'm okay <laughs> with that. I think I'm going to. We're splitting hairs here. They obviously had a very good draft. But I don't know that they did anything to have a good draft. The teacher gave them three of the answers, all right? Yeah. Lead guys fell to them that should have never fell to them. You didn't do anything right there. You just didn't do anything wrong. I think the skins, I think the skins actually had to make moves. They had to make picks. And and they had to strategize and build a board. The Cowboys had a board, didn't take anybody on their board because, because guys everybody that fell they didn't to think them. were going to be available fell to them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's no skill in that. I, I look. I taking one away from Jerry. Michael said Jerry wins. Did you see that yacht? Yeah, 100. percent We oh, saw. Oh well, no. Well, Jerry's <laughs> definitely winning that life. All right. Yeah, Did we love that Jerry. assistant that he's got that was handing him stuff. Yeah. And then Sir Dobby said, "Love it, love it." That, look, it was between the, the Redskins Bill. and the Cowboys for me. And the Blue Bill. So I, who do we think? Lo- we we agree. Well, I'm gonna. I definitively think the Eagles lost this draft and I, this division. They're the loser of these four teams out of the draft. All right, so obviously the loser for me is between the Eagles and the Giants. I, I, I'm going to go with the Eagles because the top end talent, uh, they didn't get it, and I think the Giants 
they they possibly they got two did. studs in the first two rounds. Now I like the Flyers that they took, but there's a good chance that that not. I'm. I none think. Those, I think there's, there's a chance none of those Flyers pan out. A hundred percent of them washed. That happens all the time. My problem is there was top end talent there for the Eagles to go get. Yeah. If you trade Rager out for T Higgins, what do you think right now? Because I think completely. Different. I think it's a, yeah. I think it's a whole different deal. I mean, just can't even fathom the difference. Yeah. That I, in my opinion, this is my biases and my opinions, but I think T Higgins is gonna be a star. He's just he can do anything. He can do everything. There's nothing he's bad at. Yeah. Michael said, uh, "I'm gonna have to say Cowboys one. Cooper and Lamb is gonna be nice if Dak can hit him." Uh, but it, it's not just hang about. On now. Hang on now. Shame on you if you're a Cowboys fan and you left Gallup out there because Gallup, is Gallup was better than Cooper last year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He absolutely was. He absolutely was. So, I mean, that's a three headed monster right now. That's absurd. And they got Zeke coming out of the backfield. Yeah. I mean, Dak's going to get his 40 million. Dak's going to get his 40 million. Oh, 100%. Now, I don't know if it's and, earned. And I think that the coaching is going to improve. Like we we weren't yes. ever big time McCarthy fans, but I, I think there's no question that he's a you better coach. Have, I, li- I always liked McCarthy. Okay, hey, yeah, but I, when he was at Green Bay, you weren't like you weren't ringing the bell for him. I didn't you know? think he was the problem. And, no, I, I will admit that. I will admit that you never thought he was the problem. Um, I thought. I, I, thought I think. The I think this is a coaching improvement. The front office and you're 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 just working with somebody who's un, who has unbelievable talent, but is unworkable. Yeah. Now you're, I just you're right. Can't, you can't succeed in that environment. You just can't. No, you're you're a hundred percent right. Hundred percent right. All right. I think. Uh, is is there anything else we need to hit here? No, that's it. We went long. That's cool. Hey, that's it. We we've done that ever since. You know what? It's fine. While we're doing these draft recaps, we want to we want to take as long as possible to um, not as long as possible, but we we want to take the the required time to actually go through these teams and discuss what they did. And I, I think it's uh, I think it's better. I think it's better. So. Uh, we appreciate Michael. We appreciate Matt. Just say no to drugs on Twitch. Uh, Darren McArdle jumping in on YouTube. All of you guys that have jumped in, Sir Dobby, the Brown Yeti, all you guys that have been coming in, we appreciate all of you. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, Michael, one last comment, said, not a Cowboy fan, Chris, but I'm a CSU, uh, CSU Ram, so I'm not forgetting Gallup over here. 100%. There you, uh, go. there you go. So, but yeah, we appreciate all you guys jumping in every day. You, The chat makes the show, man. We appreciate it you really guys. Does. We do appreciate this. it. Yeah, it's this, fun for us. This is a lot of fun. We definitely appreciate you guys. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you share the show out with your buddies. Uh, if there's nothing else, we are out of here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will see you all again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.